Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Lock in Your Success Trade and Market Update for April 21st, 2013. Before we get going, this is just a reminder that the presentation is for educational purposes only. We're not broker-dealers or financial advisors, and we are not making any specific trade recommendations. Also, any trades and or results covered in the presentation may or may not be live trades. And in the event they are computer simulated trades, we do the best we can to be sure that they are accurately presented. Also, the risk of loss in trading securities, options, futures, and forex can be substantial, so please be aware of all your risk factors prior to placing any trades. If you're watching this on YouTube, please be sure to visit our trading blog and sign up for our mailing list. Also, be sure to check out our Rock M3 and Bearish Butterfly video series and, and stay tuned for the other great products in the pipeline. If you'd like to get to our video programs, you can check out bearishbutterfly.com or m3options.com and follow the links. And also, while you're there, check out theoptionstribe.com. Let's take a look at the markets. Last week, we were thinking that the markets were going to have more or less a sideways range. And what we got on Monday, I did not expect. I expected the Russell to hold this range here. Uh, we knew we were setting up for a head and shoulders pattern. I did expect it to more or less come down probably to the 50-day moving average or so, maybe to this trend line, and take a little bit of time to fill out the shoulder before breaking down. Uh, what we got is just a complete breakdown of the Russell on Monday. 35-point uh, range is what we got. Multiple standard deviation move in one day. Very close to expiration. was very bad for our April trades, which were looking really good coming into the week. Um, just can't withstand that type of price movement on expiration week. So obviously that hurt us quite a bit for our April positions that, we, uh, that remained open. As far as where we go from here, we are coming into more major trend line support. I'm still thinking sideways, but just sideways in a wider range here. I, I still don't think we're going to break down below the 890 level at this point unless things change in the other indices. And you'll see what I mean when we get there. So let's take a look at the SPX here. What we had with the SPX is we had a reasonably bearish day, the mo most bearish day we've had in quite some time in the SPX. Nothing that was too drastic, though. We come down and didn't really even break any major support levels here other than a 20-day moving average. We came down into our um, primary support line, a 50-day moving average touch, which we were way overdue for. From a technical standpoint, I would still consider this bullish, even though I do take the increased volatility in here as a bearish signal from a pure technical chartist standpoint we're still holding all our major supports here there's not really uh, any technical damage onto the chart the chart is still technically bullish of course that could change with a further breakdown but as of right now we are bullish in the SPX what that means for the Russell is that we're probably going to hold this 890 area and when the SPX bounces, we're probably going to bounce up into the back side of this trend line and likely roll over and maintain this range here for a while. In the event the SPX disappoints us, I wouldn't get too excited until we start breaking this area down here, which is going to be the 1525 area. At that point, I may say we're going into something more bearish, and I would expect the Russell to break down further. But until that happens, we're, we're, uh, we're bullish on the SPX, sideways on the Russell. The Dow here never even came down. Yes, it broke its tri primary trend line, which was insanely steep. This, uh, this trend line here is insanely steep, which it broke, which, would, which should be expected. Uh, we finally broke 20-day moving average, which we haven't done in a while. Still no 50-day moving average touch, so this is still very, very, very bullish. We you know, it didn't even come down to horizontal support level. We got a bullish candle on Friday. This is, uh, this is still a bullish chart as far as I'm concerned. Even if we set back into this level down here at 14.2, I would still consider this a bullish chart. So uh, the SPA Dow is looking bullish. And as far as the NDX, the NDX is still neutral. We're just putting in this broadening pattern is getting increasing vol increasingly volatile here. Still uh, decent for sideways traders, although the, way the range is getting a little bit wide now, so it's starting to give us a little bit of trouble with market neutral stuff because you're getting chopped back and forth a little bit. However, um, you know, still the index to trade as it has been for most of the year. If you are market neutral, 
everything else pretty much has been bullish, 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 except for the Russell, which was the worst performer this week. So that's what we think of the indices at this point. If we come over and, well, before we look at our trades for this month, let's look at our results for last month, because I'm sure you're all wondering how we made out with that big move. And it wasn't good. It hurt, it hurt us quite a bit. So on our bearish butterfly trade, which was between, I mean, we hit our, we hit our low profit target at 10%. We just, just barely touched it a couple times during the month. Um, going into the week, we were slightly positive profit and loss-wise. That very large move on Monday took us down almost to a maximum loss. I decided to stay in the trade on Monday. I fought with it for a couple of days after that. I mean, we, we withstood the bounce on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, when the market really started coming down again, it was just too much uh, hassle to play with. Could we have made something with it? Possibly. Or, or not, or, or made our losses a little bit less. I did get it back to, oh, about a, about a 12% loss on Tuesday for a little while. But then the move was just too far uh, to the upside and started shaving, uh, coming back down again neutralized the delta overnight and we got that big gap down on Wednesday so I finally decided to get out at about a 25.9 percent loss well within our parameters so not a big deal the trade's been doing okay for the year um, this fairly large loss here put us down to uh, minus 2.4 percent for the year so the bad news is we ended up losing April the good news is the volatility is coming back to the Russell which I really really like and it makes things much better for our trades going forward. As far as the M3 goes, this took a greater than maximum loss. I wasn't able to get out of the trade fast enough. And with the volatility increase, you know, this trade, again, has been struggling all year. We've been kind of breaking even, breaking even, breaking even. This is the first um, significant loss we had, which did exceed our maximum loss numbers a little bit. And it was just because of the ferocity of the move on Monday. By the time I was able to pull out, we did end up uh, getting down a little bit of money. So this for the year is now 16.6%. Nothing that's not recoverable. And like I said, the return to volatility should start looking good. One of the things you'll notice is I skipped the May trade. Uh, I wanted to start getting further from expiration. So I went right ahead into June. So May is going to be uh, zero. And coming into June uh, on here, we see if we can get this back. I was expecting to get about 60 or 70% out of this for the year. I'm probably looking at maybe about 30 to 40 at this point. The market cooperates, we should be able to do that. As far as the bearish butterfly goes, we are still looking for about 100% in that trade. Um, this is just, uh, like I said, just a, a minor setback here. It's within our, our profit and loss limits, and this trade can make money very, very quickly if it gets into nice conditions for it. As far as the rock trade goes, this has been doing good all year. The conditions have been somewhat favorable. March was a very difficult month, but I ended up still doing very well. April, this year was up 15 plus percent a couple of times during the month. I think on coming into the week, I think we were up between 12 and 15 percent fairly decently. When the market started coming down hard, this was the first trade I exited because um, the trade, like I said, was going well. It's been up a lot of money. I just didn't want to fool with it, so we shut this down right away, and we're able to salvage 8% out of this. Uh, this has been doing very good all year. It's up 55.2% plant capital for the year, which is excellent. And our V trade, has, which has been very, very consistent this year, is up 18% uh, for the year, which is pretty much what I expect. We had, uh, you know, 2.7% in January, 0.8% February, about 8% uh, in March, and about 6.6% last month. The big move didn't bother at all because we're, we were uh, the trade's so wide and we were right on expiration, so everything was fine there. There was no issues whatsoever. And that's uh, where our results sit. As far as our open trades, on Friday, I opened our May rock trade. Because of the volatility level, I was kind of borderline between opening it as an, in an oil rock position or an M3 position. I decided to open it in an M3 position, which currently looks like this. We have about $30,000 capital in it to start with. We have a fairly good T plus zero line here. And if the market continues, if we get a really strong bounce on the market, we'll be converting this back over into regular rock configuration. But this is a good start. Plus, I didn't have a M3 trade on for March anyway. I think this will be a good opportunity to show you how it converts over, assuming that the market 
moves in a manner where we can do that. If not, we'll continue to trade it as an M3 trade for the month. Also, we have open our May bearish butterfly, which I did finally roll this back on Thursday. Worst timing possible, so this would be uh, this will be interesting to follow. This is going to be great. So what we had was we were sitting here in our 940s. We had a rollback point with a close, anything under 900. Or a, or more or less, if if I thought the market was going to close under 900 on Thursday, I did think the market was going to close under 900. At 3:30, we were pretty much at 8.99. So I took this and I did roll this back at the money as per guidelines. I was talking about this with uh, several people during the week, saying that if you do roll it back with the bullishness of the market, we should probably have this hedged off somewhat to the upside. The guidelines don't don't do that, so I just rolled it back normally. What I will do is I'm going to push into uh, expiration guidelines a little bit early and start scaling a little bit faster than normal. Uh, get my position size up, see if we can get our money, get a volatility drop, and punch out of this thing at a really good profit this month. We'll see what happens. But that's uh, that's the way this looks now. It's still up about $1,000. Other trades we have on, let's see, all the April stuff is gone. We talked about that. Uh, I put on a June M3. This is our entry position. We entered at 890 shorts. This would be equivalent to 10 890 butterflies with five 890 900 vertical spreads and one 850 call, which brought us basically to neutral delta on this trade. And this is what we look like here. Um, I've been having this issue every single month with the M3. I've been entering the trade. I've been down $1,000 right off the bat. Uh, same thing here. Entered the trade down $1,000 off the bat. It's just been kind of sitting here, ranging between profit and loss of zero and minus $1,000. So here's what we look like. We still have lots and lots of time here. I am planning on being out of this trade probably 30 days to expiration and at whatever profit or loss we happen to have and just take it from there. I am positioned slightly bullish because, um, like I said, I, the rest of the indices are relatively bullish. And I'm thinking we're going to have some sort of a reasonable bounce here. So that's our June M3 trade. Other items on the agenda are the V Condors. Of course, our May position, because we got uh, such a large down move and a volatility increase, is down a little bit of money. I ended up, during the week, t buying back one of these 870s to get our delta kick down. I also ended up rolling this um, one call. I think I was at 920 or 910. I don't remember. Look at our T log on the 12th. I end up buying a um, rolling our calls and puts apart a little bit to raise a T plus zero line uh, on the 15th when we had the big market move. I ended up taking the 930 put and putting it all the way back to, or up, or should I, say, I should say, up to 930, which it increased our uh, delta a little bit, a little, at least to increase our negative delta so or made it less positive delta and then i had to buy back one of these shorts to control our delta again to the downside ends up in this position here down 322 if you look at our analyzed graph trade's not in any trouble and looks like this here we get a big bounce i may end up selling that back off again and rolling this uh, vertical, this uh, put back down a little bit, see if we can kick up this expiration line a little bit. As for right now, I'm kind of perfectly happy where we are. We'll see how high this bounce goes. Obviously, if we run in this range and slowly come down, then that will be very good for us. If we end up taking a good bounce up into here, we will reconfigure this a little bit to see if we can get some more profit in the trade. But as of right now, this trade is looking perfectly fine. Uh, since we expired our April V Condor, I went ahead and did a June V Condor, which looks like this here. I sold 10 Delta calls, I sold 10 Delta puts, I bought my straddle, and I got my wings in here. Position is currently up a little bit, and if we look at our analyzed graph, it looks like this here. If we continue to trend up in this area here, could be a very, very, very good uh, month for this. Obviously, if we uh, come down, we still have plenty of downside room at this point. If we hang out here, then we're going to have to start raising the V. But as for right now, everything looks perfectly fine, and that's about it. I believe that's all the positions. So.
As we stand now, we're expecting the market to go up in the very short term, probably tomorrow. Uh, the charts on the SPX and Dow are still bullish on the Russell and NASDAQ. They're a little harder to read. Um, like I said, I consider the Russell short-term bullish, but in general sideways. And I consider the NDX just sideways. And that's all I have for this week. I'll keep you updated with any changes. Thank you and good night.